Shalom Aleichem, all the special Yidden that are listening to me. We join today in an unprecedented time. David HaMelech tells us, Shivtecha umishantecha heimo yinachmuni. One can ask, I understand why mishantecha, if he's supporting us, I understand why it's yinachmuni. But why if it's shivtecha? Why is shivtecha your stick? The stick that you hit us with. Why is that yinachmuni? What kind of comfort does one get? from the Rabbi Nishalalam hitting him. But the answer is that when one realizes that the same hand, that's Shiftecha and Mishantecha, it's not a different hand. The Rabbi Nishalalam is supporting us with the same hand that he's hitting, then we understand that the Shiftecha is not there to give us pain, but to help us grow. It's to help as a shepherd goes with his sheep, his flock of sheep, and he leads them. Sometimes he needs to use the stick to help the sheep. And he should go on the right path and he should grow. So the Rebbein Nishalaylam, when he's, since we realize that he holds the Shiftacha and the Meshantacha in the same hand, and he's the same person, the same boy Oilam that's doing shift We know that this is a growing adventure. This that we've gone through this difficult period of time is simply for us to grow. And we see that Klaus is growing unbelievably. Look at this special Yachikala that's going on for weeks. People that would usually be busy with other things, learning, working, and others, but they now devoted their time to, to learn Torah. The Heilige Chofetz Chaim in Klal Aleph of Hilfis Lashon Hora, Aloha Zion, brings a Ovis der Abnosen. That Ovis der Abnosen says that if a person has a mitzvah achas, that he could do Shaloi Betzah. And he has a mitzvah that's bizarre. So he's the Chavetz Chaim brings him over the Rav Nosen that a mitzvah that's bizarre is a hundred times greater than a mitzvah shaloi bizarre. So let's talk about limud atayr. Limud atayr usually would be in a base medrash where chavrusa not on Zoom. But look, if you have limud atayr. In this way, it's bizarre. People are going through difficulties. It's maya palmim. It's worth a hundred times more. He spends a day. He learns. He learns, let's say he learns two hours a day. You just spent an hour with Rabbi Gottesman. Now you're going to listen to me for now. It's as if he learned eight days Shaloi Betzar. Can you imagine what that means? You know what kind of opportunity that is? You know what kind of growth that is? Shiftecha umishantecha heima yinachmuni. I get comfort because I realize that the Shiftecha gave me such growth. It was really support. We're holding on the eve of Lag Boimer. Tomorrow will be Lag Boimer. Rabbi Shimon Ba'ichoi <coughs> stood up for the truth. He didn't flatter the Romans. He told people the truth, that they don't mean our best interest. And unfortunately, saying the truth came with a price. They wanted his life. He had to run away. He could have been bitter. He could have been upset at the Rabbi Nishalim. Look what you did. I said the truth, and look what I have to do. I have to run away to some cave where I can only eat charov, 
because that's all I have, and a mayan, and a water, and that's all I'm going to have to eat. I'm away from my family, locked up for years on end. But Reb Shimon Ba'ichoy knew the truth, that the shiftecha, this that you have to hide, the shiftecha is a mishantecha. What happened from Reb Shimon Ba'ichoy? He became a whole different person. He became the megal of all soydas atoyre, of the depths of the beauty that lies in Torah. That never would have happened if he would be a regular person out there. You need to go into a hidden place to find the soydas atoyre. You have to go into a cave disconnected from this world, an outworldly experience in order for one to get. So Reb Shimon Ba'ichoy knew, may upon him, living B'Tzar get you a hundred times greater. And he got a hundred times greater because he was in a cave someplace. And that is the Shivtecho Umishantecho Heimi Nachmudim. Yes, we're locked up in a cave. We've been disconnected. Well, we have Zoom, we're still connected. But we're disconnected, we're in our own houses, disconnected from the world, we should realize. We're going to grow a hundred times. And we're going to get tremendous, tremendous, you could be zoiched to tremendous madregas in Torah. All because the Rabbanistan forced us into a cave. And that's the limud we can learn from Rav Shem Ba'echoi. Shivtecho umishantecho hem yenachmon. Let's begin this incredible sugya of Ikev this sugya of Akiva Tafel is very, very important to Ilkhis Brochis. It's very, very difficult sugya. And we're going to try to touch on parts of it and see what we can take out of it as much as we can. The focus of the Shia really was supposed to be to get to the bottom line to figure out what brocha you're going to make on your cheesecake. Coming Shavuos, Minig Yisrael, to eat cheesecake. There's many different cheesecakes. And I saw some pictures before running through on Zoom. But let's figure out first the Klolem, and then we'll come back at the end to discuss all the types of cheesecakes and to see what bracha we're going to make. Let's begin with the Mishnah that you all learned. The Mishnah says a story where somebody, as the Gemara explains, needed to eat Paris. He ate Paris genoisa that were very sweet, and that taste left a very strong, sweet taste, so he needed some miliach. And as Toysus learns, that was another food that was salty, and that tempered the very sweet taste, but now he has a too strong of a taste from the Meliach, so now he needs pass. So one food brought another food and brought another food, and the Mishnah says <coughs> that he makes a brock on the Meliach, and he exempts, he does not need a brock on the pass. Even though the pass, there's nothing kosher than pass, than bread, once he makes a bracha on the Meliach, he no longer has to make a bracha on pas. And the Mishnah ends. Zaklal. This is the rule. Kol shu If something is an ikir, that means that your focus, the very interest, it's a tuffle. Since it's not your primary interest, you make the brocha on the ikka, and you do not need to make a brocha on the tefillah. So you made a brocha on the meliach, which was shahakoil, and you got already a piece of bread for free. Without a brocha, you don't need to make hamoyitzi. And the poets can most say you don't need to wash. You're going to not need to wash until you die.
started for us. So then the Hakir question that they will ask on this halacha of Ikar and Tofu, and that is, they want to know whether a person, this din that says that if someone makes a brach on the Ikar, he doesn't have to make a brach on the Tofu, is the definition, since he's only intended really, he only wanted to eat the Ikar. He didn't want to eat the Tofu, just he has to. He needs the bread because the malayach is too salty. So therefore, we look at it as if he's not really eating the tofu. It's not necessary to have a broth. Because as long as he ate the ikka and he made a broth on it, the tofu is as, it's just here because of the owner. The tofu needs a broth. As much as the ikka needs a bracha. <clears throat> but the bracha that one made on the ikka, even though it's a different bracha than usually would be necessary for the one that's the tafel, for the one that's not as important as just here because of the ikka, and that has a different bracha because this one is shahakal and this one's hamoitzi. But since the tafel only came. Because of the Ikka, so the bracha of the Ikka would also be You would be thanking the Rabbon Shalom on the Tafel as well, and the Tafel would be exempt with the bracha of the Ikka. Now, one can ask, it's very nice, what difference does it make? Well, one of the differences may be what Toysvis. Toysvis asks a question. Why is it that the Mishnah says yes, that are very sweet? Then you need to eat maliach, salty food, so you can get rid of the sweet taste. Then you need to eat pas to get rid of the bitter taste, the this, this, this sharp taste of the maliach. So it would seem that the maliach is a tofu, the pas is a tofu, and the paris is the ikka, because your intention originally was to eat paris. So why don't you make a bracha, boire, priya, aids on the paris? And, and you exempt the pas. So Toys says, technical problem. The first text of Toys says, Shaloi Ochala Peris Boisai Maimut. He didn't eat the Paris in the same time, in the same sitting as he ate the Maliach and the Pas. And therefore, the Maliach and the Pas need a broth. We'll explain what that means in a moment. The second text of Toys Toys says, when he ate the Paris, he still wasn't sure he's going to need the Maliyah. So he wasn't thinking about anything yet. He was just thinking about eating the Paris. So he, the Paris is, he's, he's eating the Paris. He, while he ate the Paris, he made the Brahma Paris, he didn't realize that he needs to make a Brahma uh, he's going to need to eat Maliach. So since he didn't realize he's going to need to eat Maliach, therefore, now that he decides later he wants to eat the Maliach, the bracha that he made on the Paris did not exempt the Maliach and the Pas. So it seems that when one wants the din of Kol Shem Mavarach Ala Ike, Kol Shem Mavarach though to have a mind that is going to eat the tofu. If somebody needs to and is not going to have a mind that is eating the maliach, so let's see if uh, we can get it again. Let's go back again. So we said 
that Toysvis has a question. Why is it that in the Mishnah, the person made a bracha on the miliach, and he that with that he exempt his tofel. He got rid of the bracha on the pass. Why didn't he make a bracha on the Paris? He should have made the bracha on the Paris. Because really his intention was to eat Paris. And from his Paris, his intention was to eat the Maliach to take away the bad taste of the Paris. And the Maliach's purpose, the past then came to take away the bad t- t- taste of the of the of the Maliach. So really the Ikka is the Paris. So why is he making a bracha? on the Maliach and exempting the Paris. They should have done Faket. He should have taken the Brocha and made it on the pa- on the Paris. And with that, he would exempt the, the other Brochas. So Toysis answers two answers. The first time it's Toysis answers that he wasn't there when he ate the Paris. He wasn't Boisei Maimed that he was when he ate the Maliach and the past. We'll explain what that means in a moment. And the second test, Toysa says that you do not have a mind when you made the bracha on the Paris, you did not think you were going to eat the Malich or the Pas. What you thought you were going to eat was just the Paris. So you didn't have a mind to exempt the Pas and the Malich. And therefore, you make a bracha on the Malich again. So the Achroidim say, it would seem, that since we see from here that if a person makes a bracha on Ike and he's only eating the tofu because of the Ike, still we're saying it needs a bracha from the Ike because if you didn't have a mind that you're going to eat the tofu, you need a new bracha on the tofu. So we see it's not the shot that we look at it as if you didn't eat the tofu. Of course you ate the tofu. And of course it needs a bracha. But the bracha that you made on the Ike would help to pat the tofu. And that was saying, it's like all Hilchah's brachas. You had to have in mind when you made this bracha that you want to as well exempt something else. And therefore, if you didn't have a mind, then the halacha would be you would need a new bracha on the tofu. This is very important halacha. It's negaya very much lamaisa. If somebody eats French fries, and ketchup. Well, nobody likes to eat ketchup. Ketchup is there to make the French fry taste better. So the f- ketchup is a tuffle to the French fry because nobody's eating the ketchup only to give a taste to the French fry. So when you make a boyer pria doma and the French fry, you would exempt the ketchup from its broche. The ketchup needs a shahaka. So you would not have to make shahaka on the ketchup because you. Now, what happens if someone was planning to eat French fries without ketchup? Why? He decided it's not good for his health. He wants to eat only today French fries without ketchup. And then he eats two or three and he says, it's just too dry. I can't bring me the ketchup. When they bring him now the ketchup, he's going to need a brocha of shahakal on the ketchup. Even though he's only going to eat the ketchup as a tofu to the ikker, as the tofu to the French fry. But the brocha of the French fry no longer exempted the broch of the ketchup because he didn't have a mind when he was going to eat it. Now, if he usually dips in ketchup, so the achroinim say that if you usually do that, it's as if you had it in mind. So if you usually do it and you were not intending to do something different right now, even though it wasn't on the table and it wasn't what you had in mind, specifically, we, it's assumed as if you had it in mind. But if it's something that you don't always do, so if you have a mind, you need a new bracha. So again, it would seem from this toysvis that a tofu needs a bracha. Now, it would seem like that from the next terrace of toysvis as well. The Mogav Rom learned that the next terrace of toysvis is, is that you ate the Paris. The first terrace of toysvis was you ate the Paris, and then you left. You went, walked outside and you came back, you walked out of your house and then you came back in and now you want to eat the tofu. Walking out of your house is called the shinu mokun. 
which is a whole sugi in Ilchas Brochus, and therefore it's a Hesach Adas. It's considered as if you ended the meal, and now when you come back in, you need a new Brocha on the Tuffel, even though, again, it's a Tuffel. It doesn't need a Brocha. The answer is it needs a Brocha. Just the Brocha of the Ik, it goes on the Tuffel. Here it can't because you chopped it off. So the Achroinim, many Lomdish Achroinim, and the Chazanish, La'aloche, and many say, of course, a Tuffel needs a Brocha. It's only a question that the Brocha of the Ik exempts the Tuffel. Okay. There's still many, many different issues but I want to focus and try to get to the cheesecake question. So we're going to try to jump quickly to where we need to get. The Iker of Tuffel, the Iker of Tuffel that the Mishnah talks about is not very clear how you ate the pas and the mulich. Did you eat it? a piece of herring on a piece of pass and ate them together? Did you eat the malich and then you ate the pass? It's not very clear how this happened. But the Achroinim and the Shulchan Aruch brings from another sugi from Daf Mem Aluf, that it's clear if one eats first one thing, and then he eats another thing separately, just for the purpose of the first one, that would be the halacha of ikevetofu. The case is, I ate snoin. Snoin is some kind of radish. It was very bitter. He needed to temper that taste, so afterwards he eats a zayas and olive. So the Gemara is mavua, that you do not make a bracha on the zayas, since the purpose of the zayas was simply to temper the taste of the tznoim. You did not intend to eat the zayas only for that purpose. Therefore, even though the zayas is boya priya eight and the tznoim is boya priya doma, you make boya priya doma, you no need, longer need a broch on the zayas. And again, you had to have a more in the zayas. And this way, you were able to exempt the zayas with the broch that you made on the tznoim. This is one case. Then we have a case where the din of Ikevetov also applies when the two things are mixed together. Now we'll go to an extreme case, not to the case where I ate a herring on top of a piece of bread. No, we're going to talk about now a case where we made one food. Everybody knows if you want to make food, very few things have one ingredient. So you have a whole bunch of ingredients together. So you can have a food that has 10 ingredients. Every one of those ingredients can have a different bracha. Well, not every one, but many can have a different bracha. Some could be a shahaka, some could be a bari priyayit, some could be bari minimizoinus. Just for example, a person can have rice, and in the rice they put an onion, and in the onion, they also put in some cranberries because it's a good taste to mix cranberries into your rice. So now, craisins, craisins, craisins. So now you have three brochas in your rice. You have a mazoinus for the rice. You have a adome for the onions. And you have a boire priya eight for the cranberries. So here we have now three brochas mixed in. So now when you eat this rice, are you going to make three brochas or are you going to make one brocha? So everybody knows that you're only going to make one brocha. What brocha are you going to make? I'm assuming everybody knows you're going to make the brocha on the rice. And the question is why? I made a brocha on the rice, true. And I made burning mezoinus on the rice. Good, but what right do I have to eat now cranberries? It needs another brocha. Why do I have a right to eat onions? It needs another brocha. So the answer is that here again, we use the concept of ikke v'tofa. And that is that we look at the rice as the ikke and the rest as the tofa. Why? Because they're just coming to give taste to the rice. The rice is the intention of the food. 
The rest is coming to give taste to the rice. Therefore, it doesn't need its own broccoli. Now, even though here, we're talking about one food. This is how it's cooked. This is how it's made. This one food has one broccoli. Of the rice, the rest is the tofu. It's just there to enhance the taste of the rice, and therefore, doesn't get its own broccoli. So the poets can say there are cases where it's not as clear what's the ikr and what's the tofu. So as a general rule, the rule is, and the Mogav Rom brings it over here in the beginning of the simon, Reish Yud Beis, he says that if the roiv is of one food, if the roiv is one broker, that becomes the ikr, everything else becomes the tofu, and we say the broch of the roiv, and the rest is exempt. So that's the halacha of ikr v'tofu. We can have two circumstances. One is, you can have something that it's clear, everybody knows what the ikr is. Then the prima godum says that, of course, we make the broch on that one. And the rest is potter because they're just a tofu. Then we can have those that it's not clear. And in that case, we would use the rule of roiv. Since roiv is of one bracha, the rest would get the bracha of the roiv. There's two common questions in Hilchus brachas that happen very often, and it's not clear, the bracha. One of them is sushi. It's from today's favorite foods. Here we have a food that's definitely one food, and we have rice, and in the middle we can have fish, we can have avocado, we can have all kinds of different stuff they stick in. Now the question is, what brother do you make on this food? Can somebody say that definitely the food's intention was one of the two? Maybe one can say. Somebody claims that the word sushi means rice in Japanese. And the only constant in every sushi is rice. So definitely it's rice and it's enhanced by the food inside of it. If somebody asked me, I wouldn't be convinced. I would think that rice for the most part is not the intention. Just like when I eat chicken and rice, I don't think my meal is rice. I think the rice is to help out the chicken. If I eat sushi, it, it may just be helping out the avocado. It's may avocado together with the taste of sushi or fish with some, with some rice. So then you would need roiv. If it's not clear, you would need roiv. And roiv could depend on which sushi you're eating. If in that one the rice is roiv, or in that one the avocado is roiv. So this is something that's not clear, because when you're going to eat sushi, you're going to have to measure every single time which one is the ikka and which one is the tov. You're going to have to measure which one's the right and which one's the milk. So here we have a food that runs into an issue, what's the ikka and what's the tov. When it's not clear, the poets can advise that you separate the two and you eat at least one or a little bit of rice, and the other one that needs a bracha, you make two brachas, and this way you get out of the sophic what to do. Then you also have another case. You have chocolate-covered almonds, and chocolate-covered peanuts, and chocolate-covered raisins. And if you have peanuts, the peanut is adomer. If you have almonds, it's aids. And sometimes you even have chocolate-covered pretzels. And that could be mezoinus. And the question is sometimes, what's the ikir? What's the tofu? So it's someone saying, if you have a whole platter of chocolate and everything's chocolate and one is nuts and one is this and one is that, so you, you would just want to eat chocolate. Others would say, no, it depends what's inside. I don't eat this one. It's true, I like a chocolate covered, but I want that. If you would go to Roiv, do you know what the roiv is? Is roiv chocolate or roiv the nut? It probably depends on which ones. In Igris Moshe, 
he says a very interesting thing. He talks about chocolate covered almonds and he says you have to make two brachas. Why would that be? Why would one have to make two brachas? Many don't understand what he's saying. Why would one have to make two brachas? Again, there's an ikr and a tofu. So I think that the Moshe holds that, no, it's not clear that there's an ikr and a tofu here. Because if the roiv is not intended, there's no intention to make one roiv over the next. So if the roiv is not intended and both, you want to eat both, even if technically it looks like one food, you may have to make two brachas. Because the only reason why it should be one bracha is because roiv is either kaveh or your intention. None of them are clear. So these are, again, questions of ikevetofel when we have one food. Again, we use the rules, either your intention, and if your intention is not clear, we use the rule of roif. This has one exclusion, and that is, the exclusion is, kol sheyesh boy mimin chameshes haminim. If you have inside of your food a thing that's made with chamisha samin, you have chamisha samin, it means you have one of the five grains are found inside this food. Once you have five, one of the five grains inside this food, the halacha is that automatically that becomes the ikka. That means if I have a food that has an ingredient, a flour inside, even though the flour is not the roiv. Roiv of the food is not. Many cereals where the intention is to put in flour for taste, but it's not the roiv. There's so many other ingredients. So the halacha would be that if you have chamesh samidim, it's the ikr, even though it's not the roid, and even though it's not clear your intention, you make barimina mizoimis. Now, this is only true if the intention of the flower is for taste. If the intention is just to cause the other foods to connect, to be, to, to, to bind, it's used as a binder, Flour as a binder does not have the halacha of koshi yeshboi. And the reason is because so long as it's only a binder, it's definitely the tafel. It's not there at all for itself. It's there to be mishamish, to help out the rest of the food. It's not there for itself as well at all. And therefore, it loses the bracha of mezoinus. And now you go with the regular rules of roiv and and what your intention was. The difficulty with this is, is what happens if I have a food that has mezoinus, it has flour, it has one of the chamesh sambinim, but clearly by intention is for the other one. But I also want the flour there and I want it there for taste. It would seem from the Stimus Apoiskim that the Allah is, it still would have a Allah of Mazonis. If this is true, then if you have breaded chicken, that means you have chicken cutlets or schnitzel, like they call it today, where it's breaded with Mazonis, with flour, with bread crumbs, it should have a brocha, but I mean a Mazonis. Why? Because you have now a food that's breaded with mezoinus, has an ingredient of boiramina mezoinus, and kol sheyesh boiramina from the five grains, the bracha would be boiramina mezoinus. Some say, if this is true, we have another problem. Gefilte fish. I don't know if you all eat gefilte fish, but if you do, and you eat it Pesach, and you eat it a whole year, you'll see it's very, very different texture, and a very different taste. A whole year that bought gefilte fish is very doughy. You know why? Because they use a lot less fish. 
and they use a lot more flour. And people like the taste. They don't only like, it's not only a binder. And many times the flour is in huge amounts. And someone to say, if that's true, we should make butter, meat, and mezainas on fish. Now, the minigoylam is not to make butter, meat, and mezainas on fish. And the minigoylam, for most people, make shahakoil on chicken cutlets. Some attacker, because of this question, they are makpit to only use, they use, they don't use, they use cornflake crumbs. They do not use burimin and mezoinus crumbs because they feel that it should be called shiyash boy and they will make burimin and mezoinus. There are those that say that maybe no, even burimin and mezoinus, even called shiyash boy, it's only in place of a roiv. That means wherever roiv would say that you should make that bracha. So as long as it has from the five grains, you don't need roiv. Any little bit that's there for taste, you make boim in the But once it becomes very clear, abundantly clear, the entire intention is to eat chicken cutlets. And this is called, it's just a covering. And that's not the intention nobody ever eats the crumbs of the chicken cutlets without eating a chicken cutlet. It's just not a food that people eat. So by definition, it's clear, it's clear that this is the tuffle, and therefore in such a case, you would make shahakal meal before. With the fish, it becomes a little more complicated. Why one should make shahakal? It's not, uh, we can't spend now the time to maybe explain this, but this is the concept. So again, we have now a new type of ikavitofu, like we discussed. We had the din of the Mishnah that talks about ikavitofu with the entire intention of eating the other food is simply to help this food. Then we have an ikavitofu where you have one food and most of the, you have, you, you don't know what the intention is. So if you know what the intention is, clearly you make that bracha. Except by mezoinis, it's a question. But by other foods, as long as you know the intention clearly, you make that bracha. But if you don't know the intention clearly, so then by mezoinus, it's for sure that you always say whatever's from the five grains, automatically that's the bracha. By other minim, you go with roiv. If roiv is one, we say that the dapper comes the ikka, the other one is the tofu. And if not, if it's, if it's not the, 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 the one is not roiv, so then we have a problem. If you have half and half, could be you need two brothers. If it's not clear, if it's half and half, some say you should make the brocha that's the most kailalas. I would say you should really need two brochas. So I think you should add more to make it into the roi. One more step in this thing, and that is we have a prima godim. Many times you have foods that are not one. You didn't bake them or cook them or make them, they're not one. But there's many of them mixed together in small pieces and you turn it into like one food. An example, if I, I'm in the morning, I want to eat cereal, so I want some cornflakes, but I also want a little bit of Rice Krispies. So I mix Rice Krispies and cornflakes in one bowl. So now, is this one bracha or this two brachas? Do I say, whatever's the roif? Even though rice is buried in the mezoinus, it's not from the five grains, you don't, it doesn't become an automatically. So now it's a question, do I go with roif? My intention is to eat both. Do I look at the roiv? No. Why should I look at the roiv? Maybe I should look at it as two foods that happen to be in one bowl. So I should make two brachas. Just like if I had in my bowl rice and next to it I had a salad. So just because they're in one bowl, they don't become one food. Each one needs its own bracha. So here too, it's two foods in one bowl. I should make two brachas. 
So the Prima Godim and the Derech HaChaim say, no. If it's very mixed up, and every time you take out the poison, if you take out a spoon, you get Rice Krispies and cornflakes, and now it turns into one food. And therefore, the Roif. If Roif is one, you make the broth on the Roif. If it's not Roif, then you have a problem. You don't know what broth to make. So again, either you have to make two brochas, or you should add a little more where one becomes clearly the Roif. And in that way, you won't have this issue. The Uma said, the Chaya Odom says, no. This that foods are mixed together, don't make them into one meal. And they have, don't make them into one bracha. And he says, you don't go with roiv, it needs its own brachas. The Bira Locha brings both of these opinions. And he says, Sophic brachas la'akul. And in such a case, you do not make two brachas, you only make one bracha. But if you realize if it's only Sophic brachas la'akul, the, the Bira Locha himself says, he tries to find eights that you shouldn't end up with such a situation. So if you can avoid such a situation, you definitely should avoid it. And therefore, if someone, let's say, wants to eat Christ, Rice Krispies and, and, and cornflakes, it would be better if he first ate the, he put in his bowl corn, uh, right, uh, cornflakes or Rice Krispies, whichever one, rather the Rice Krispies, he makes mezoinus, and then he would add afterwards, if he can add, take out the, from, the, from the box some cornflakes, make on it the brocha, some cornflakes are from milled, and then it's only a shahakal, some are whole corn, whole corn, and they make the brocha on that, and then mix it, and this way you get out of the sophic brochas. So this is also in the gay if you have a salad. So many times salads today, they decided that putting in fruit and vegetables mixed together gives it a very good taste. So they have sometimes nuts and cranberries, uh, cra uh, craisins, and all kinds of different stuff that they mix in, or sometimes oranges they mix into a salad with lettuce and tomato. So we have now a salad mixed of fruits and vegetables. Now, is this two brachas or is it one brach? So again, the poets can mostly go with the achro of the mishabur is sophic brachas. And we look at this as one food, as long as there's an every letter on, 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 when you take a spoon or a, a, a full of it, it will come both of the minim. You make one bracha, and now you have to figure out which one's the roif. So when your wife makes such a salad, tell her from before, make sure one is overwhelmingly the roif, so that we don't end up with a problem of knowing what bracha to make. And now we're going to come to the last kind of question of Ik and Roif, of Tofel and Ik. It says in Shulchan Aruch that if somebody wants to eat a merkachas, a merkachas was some kind of concoction of, we had in it honey and some other ingredients, I'm not clear what they were, but the intention of the person was that he wanted to eat that merkachas, that jam or that sign, some kind of mixture that was very tasty and he wanted to eat it. But it's a very uh, sticky food, and it's something that uh, you're holding your hand. It's very not pleasant. So they used to put it on top of a rocket. A rocket was a flat, like a flatbread. It was a mezoinus, but it was flat, and it didn't have very much of a taste. It was just simply bland. And the intention of the person was not to eat it at all. He just wanted to hold. He needed to have something to grab. They didn't have a spoon or whatever. They used, they used to use this rocket, and that's how they ate it. That means this merkacha sat on the rocket, it sat on the thing, on this flatbread, and they ate it that way. Satan Shulchan that you only make the brocha on the merkachas. You do not make the brocha on the, Now, this thing is mezoimus. You don't say kol sheyashvoy. You don't say that it's the ikr. It has the aloha, like the din of the Mishnah that the whole rocket is there simply for the merkachas. Why? Because you, you don't want to eat it at all. You're not going to throw it out. It's already under the merkachas, and you just don't want to stick, get your hand sticky. So it doesn't get a bracha. It's yoitzi, you bracha, the bracha of the merkachas, patas the, the rocket. 
Many places can say that this would apply to our very common case. Today, I don't know how many people still use it, but when I was a kid, we ate ice cream in a plain cone that had absolutely no taste. It's like paper taste. But you eat it. Why do you eat it? Really, you're trying to eat ice cream. You're trying to lick ice cream. This cone is tasteless, pointless. It's just there to hold it. So even though while it's there, you bite into it and you eat it, it doesn't deserve a bracha. It, it doesn't deserve its own bracha. It gets the bracha of the ice cream, and all you would make is shahakon, and the cone comes up. Comes the Morgan of Rome, and he says, this is only true if the flatbread has no taste. But today, he says, we make, we put this merkachas on dufshinim. Dufshinim was a sweet, it was a sweet dough. It tasted good. So he says, since the intention of the people is that they like the sweet dough as well, therefore, the halacha is that it's not the halacha of the Shulchan Aruch, and the sweet dough needs a bracha. That's what it says in the Morgan of Rome. Comes the Rav Shulchan Aruch in Simon Kuf Samaches, and he says, you know what it means? It means you only make one bracha. Which bracha? The bracha of Boyre Minim is Oinus. So we have a Merkachas on top of a Dubshinim, they're sitting one on top of the other, and you make one bracha, not two, and you make Boyre Minim is Oinus. The Machsis Hashekel on this Morgan of Rome says no. You make two brachas on the Mizoinus and on the Dubshinim. So we seem to have a Machloikis. Do we look at this as one food or do we look at this as two foods? Do we look at this, then it's one food and the rule is kosher yesh boy? Or do we look at it as two foods? And if it's two foods, you don't say that the bracha on this, get, get, each one is its own bracha. And therefore, you make a mezoinus, and you make the bracha on the makachas, if it's shakal or if it's boy priates. So you have two brachas. The Mishnah Brura, in Simen Kuf Samachas, if Kotten Memhei, he brings the Rav Shukhanoch, and he says, you only make Borem in the But he says, and I'm going to read you his words, O Pashut, the Daf Kishe Be'ei Safi and Efam Be'yachat. The Mishabura says that the case is talking about that they baked the Merkachas on top of the Dupshinim. They baked this flat bread, which had a good taste, they baked it together with the makachas in the oven. Then it's one bracha. But, says the Mishnah Bruder, if they baked each one separate, they baked it, the, the, the flat bread, the dupshin and separate, and then they put on the makachas. So the aloch is that you make two brachas. That means the Mishnah Bruder seems to be telling us that being on top, it doesn't make it into one bracha. Being on top does not make that automatically it becomes a tofu. It's only when they're baked together, then they turn into one food, and then automatically we have to pick which one is the ikka and which one's the tofu. And there you go with the rule of kosher yeshba. If you want the dufshinim, you like it, and you want the taste, you gotta make hamazayimus. I have mekachas, it's a tofu. Like, like always, dupshene, it's a tofu. If you don't bake them together, so then it's like eating at one time two foods. If you eat two foods at one time, you make two brothers. You make a mezoinus on the dupshene, and a shakal on the mekachas. That's what says in Mishnah Bruder. Now, it's very possible that the master of shakal agrees with this. He just didn't understand that the case was that you baked it. So he said, you make two brachas. And if you bake it, you make one bracha. So the Rav Shechonach and the, Sh- and the Masar don't have to be arguing. One's talking about if you baked it together, and one's talking about if you didn't bake it together. So if you baked it together, you make one bracha, and it's misalimus. If you don't bake it together, it's two brachas. Now, the Mishiburi does speak out and this is very important, if this is true, if I'm gonna eat tuna fish and crackers, or peanut butter and a cracker, 
So a peanut butter and a cracker, we know. The intention of the peanut butter is to enhance the taste of the cracker. But if I eat tuna fish on a piece of, on a cracker, on a flatbread, do I make two brochas? Because now they were not baked together. They're just simply lying one on top of the other. So therefore, I should make only, only one, or I should make two brochas. The Mishnah says in Simon Reish Yud Beis, and he alludes to it in this Mishnah as well, no, you can only make one bracha. You can only make the bracha of Bairam in Amazonas. And the reason is because the tuna fish is melafis as a pas. That means tuna fish is a type of food that you use to eat with, together with pas. People don't want to eat bread plain. They eat it with other foods. What other foods do they eat bread with? Tuna fish, avocado. These are things that people eat bread with. So there, automatically, everything that bread is eaten with something else, and there, the derech is that bread is eaten with this thing, then the aloha is that it gets the aloha of the bread or the mezoinus, and you make boim in the mezoinus. And he says this aloha is true even if you eat rice cakes and tuna fish, or rice cakes and avocado, you make the broch on the rice cake, and not on the other one, because it's there to enhance. We look at it as being malafis, that the derech you eat together with the rice cake, and therefore... It gets the broch of the rice cake. That's the halacha that the Mishnah says. But if it's not there to enhance it, like merkachas, nobody, it's not a, the bread is not enhanced or the cracker is not enhanced by the taste of the merkachas. So there, it's two brochas. Unless it's baked together, then it becomes one broch. That's the shita of the Mishnah the Rav Shulchan Aruch does not hold like this. The Rav Shulchan Aruch seems to say that even if it's not baked together, it still has one bracha, as long as one is laying on the top of the other and they're stuck together. We don't need that they should actually be baked together. As long as they're laying one on top of another, they turn into one bracha automatically. That's the sheet of the Rav Shulchan Aruch. We're not going to be marich, but that's what the Rav Shavanov says. I want to now come turn our attention to our cheesecakes. And with this, I think we'll end this year. First, let's talk about the cheese batter, and then we'll talk about the shell or the mezoinus that's on the bottom or of this cheesecake. We're going to talk primarily about the new cheesecake, what we call New York style cheesecake. And that is where you have a cheesecake with primarily cheese. There may be a little crust or crumbs on the bottom, but it's primarily cheese. Now in this cheese batter, there's always some flour. But in a regular cheesecake, that batter is that Flour is simply a binder. It's not there for taste at all. The person who I spoke to today who makes cheesecake told me it's a very small amount. He thinks that in 120 pounds of cheese, there may be four pounds of flour, very small amount, and it's there simply to be a binder. So in that case, the binder, the, the, the cheese itself, the cheese mixture would not become a mezonis. Where a person puts in more flour and he puts it in for taste, and there are there does exist such cheesecakes in Williamsburg in the Hungarian. A lot of people make cheesecakes in this way. They they put in a lot of flour because they wanted to have like a, a cakey taste. In that case, it's no question that the cheesecake comes out right mezoinus because it's there for flavor. And we said that if there's a tarubis mixed. So if it has a mezoinus, has five from the five grains, it turns into a boy in a mezoinus. So let's assume now for a second that your batter, the cheese part, is kol kula shaka. No question. Now, on the bottom of this cheesecake, we now have crumbs. So there's many different ways to make this, and I'm going to go through the three ways to make it. One is they put on the bottom a crumb that's very tasty. They work very hard to make sure that it has the right taste. 
and it's sweet, and it's a very good taste. So, there the aloha lechore should be. It's baked together as well. Any professional cheesecake, we're talking about where it's baked together. When you buy a cheesecake from the companies, it's baked together with the crust. They first bake the crust, then they bake the crust together with the cheese in it. So they now bake the cheese together with the crust on bottom. So this would be the halacha of merkachas, baked together with dovshinen. The dovshinen have a good taste. You there, you want it there for the taste. It like you like very much the taste of the crumbs together with the cheese, and therefore the halacha would be you make boyamina mezoynis. If you're a person that's on a diet or you have celiac, you're not interested in eating, only cheating, only for the cheese, and you're not going to eat the bottom at all, so it's understood. If you now take out the cheese from it, it turns into a regular shaka, you make a shaka. It's only if you're eating it and you're enjoying it, like most people do, so then you make boerimina mezoinus. If not, just like you can take a food and separate it and then it becomes separate food, so you can t- take the cheese out and it'll become a shaka. Now one can ask, I'm saying that you make mazoinus on this, why is this different than chicken cutlets? I have schnitzel that's covered, breaded, no one has a shayla that they were saying, most people will make on that a shaka. Why would they make on crumbs on the bottom and you have a whole cheesecake with intention is cheese? So it's true, it adds flavor, but it's clearly that this is a cheesecake. The answer is it's a cheesecake. It means it's made to be a cake with cheese. These crumbs people would eat with other things. People eat these crumbs plain, they're very tasty. A chicken cutlet has, a, it's just simply a covering for a, a, uh, a meat. And therefore, I think that that's the reason why that may be shako. But this case is most definitely a mezonis. They also have a different cheesecake where they bake it in a pie crust. That pie crust has almost no taste. It's a very, very, almost tasteless kind of thing. It has a drop of a taste. So if they bake it together and you want you like the taste, it's good enough for you. The Allah is, you make a mezonis as well, because since you baked it together and you like the taste, you make mezonis. But if you don't like the taste, you don't like the taste at all. You're just simply eating it because that's the way to hold the cheesecake. If not, it'll fall apart in pieces, but you have no interest. It's a lot of times they put a pie crust and they put inside things and, they, and nobody, nobody's interested in the pie crust. It's, it's just there to hold it. So even if you eat it at the end, that's like rakikin that are holding on it merkachas, that I love is, if it's holding merkachas and it's simply there, that it shouldn't fall apart or it shouldn't fall in your hands, it shouldn't get dirty, and it's the normal way to eat it, but you have no interest in eating it, you do not make boreminam zoinus, you only make a sha'akal, and you can eat as well the pie crust. There are cheesecakes where people make them privately, and that is that they don't bake at all the cheesecake. They just mix a batter of cheese or whatever, and they put it into a pie crust, and they just put it into the fridge like that, or the freezer like that, and then they serve the the cheesecake that way, which would mean that they weren't baked together. So here, we run into this question, because according to the Mishnah Brewery, we said that if you don't bake something together, then it may just be two layers, and it would need two brachas. Because you have a cheesecake, which is the batter, and it's inside of a pie crust. It was never baked together. They don't become one. There's simply one laying on the next. So it's like a makachas on top of a kick that tastes good. Then Mishnah Brewery says if they're not baked together, you make two brachas. According to the Rav Shulchanoruch, you would make one bracha, because as long as it's stuck on top of one another, it's, it's connected, the halacha would be you make one bracha. In Igris Moshe, it's pretty clear that in such a case, you would make two brachas, according to Mishnah Buri. There are those that say no, that even the Mishnah Buri would agree that if you have something that you turn into a cake and everyone knows it's one food, or you freeze it together, that itself turns it into one food and automatically it would assume the bracha of 
the pie crust. But again, it's also only if you intend, you like the pie crust. If you don't like it, and it's simply there to hold the thing, you wouldn't make that bracha. It's also very negaya. People make ice cream cake, where they put, again, ice cream into a pie crust. They never bake it together, because you can't bake ice cream. And you simply put it in there, and now this thing is, Lord uh, Mr. Brewer is a very good question. If you would make one bracha or two brachas, you may make, have to make two brachas. So in my house, we separate it, and we make a bracha um, on two things that are part of the bracha. But if not, you don't want to do this. If you don't like the paragraphs, so you definitely want to make shahaka. If not,